this season I want to implore you, to encourage you to take God seriously. Take the things of the kingdom very, very seriously. Hallelujah. We are in our series on the prophetic. Say the prophetic. Talk to me. Say the prophetic. Uh, let's start in uh, Matthew 10 verse 41. The prophetic is very, very powerful. It is a supernatural mystery that God has uh, from the beginning of time sent as an advantage to the body of Christ and to God's children and it was hijacked by the enemy. The prophetic was hijacked by the enemy, misused and abused and uh, uh, um, you know many of us we almost made a huge mistake by throwing out the prophetic, throwing out the baby in the water but the prophetic when used within the confines of scripture is very powerful. Hallelujah. So today I'm not preaching. I want to teach and, and help to bring understanding. Say understanding. Talk to me. Say understanding. Whatever you understand, you can benefit from fully. You can't fully benefit from something you don't understand. I learned by the grace of God that a lot of people don't do a lot of things that they are told to do in church simply because they don't understand. It's not that they don't want to, but they don't understand. Men of God, don't shout at me. Make me understand. Teach me. Take your time. Teach me. The teacher's job is to teach. Hallelujah. So in every authentic man of God, there should be the teaching ministry. Teaching is crucial. Hallelujah. But there is a side of the man of God that is the prophetic side. Say the prophetic side. Now, when you say prophetic, people think of a man of God telling you what you, what, what you ate last week or what you eat next week. No. Or your address. No. Those are just called words of knowledge. A word of knowledge. A word of knowledge is not prophecy. Amen. So the primary role of prophecy is not even to locate what happened in the past, though it is part of it. So I can tell you what happened in the past, so I build your faith. Amen. Amen. So when I tell you what happened in the past, I build your faith. Then when I tell you what will happen in your future, amen, if you follow the word, if you follow the word, what will happen if you follow the word, when I tell you what will happen in the future, then you believe what I'm saying based on me locating what happened in the past that you can confirm. So it's to build your faith. It's not the totality of prophecy. I, I, I want you to understand this. It's not the totality of prophecy. So many people think that, you know, a, a man of God, just telling what happened in your past is, is the total, uh, you know, package of, of prophecy. No. Actually, what happened in my past does not even really benefit me. The true, authentic realm and purpose of prophecy, hello, is to create a future. There's the creative dimension of the prophetic. Creative creative somebody say creative so prophecy can create it's a hidden mystery in the body of Christ prophecy can and should create things in your future and that creation is by the word of God the word of God so a true genuine prophet must be full of the word must be full of the word don't trust a prophet who does not have the word I'm not talking about one or two scriptures. He should be full of the word. Full of the word. You can't know more word than your prophet. Means it's the wrong prophet. He should be full of the word. Say full of the word. Talk to me. Say full of the word. Right? In the beginning was the word. John 1 verse 1 to 14. I'll paraphrase and pick some parts. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. All things were made by him. Him who, him the word. And without him, the word, was nothing made that was made. So we then go to the prophetic, creative dimension of the prophetic, where we must create things by the word. So when I say by this time tomorrow, I must find a scripture to back up what I'm saying. Are you getting it? The Bible calls, uh, I think it's in the book of Peter, the Bible calls the word a more sure word of prophecy. It's more sure because the word is tried in fire seven times. So when I prophesy in your life, I'm creating things in the future. So you help me now. Or, you know, we work together. This is teamwork. We work together as, son, as, as a son uh, in the house and your spiritual father in the house. 
we work together to create your future. So what I prophesy to you, I give you a corresponding scripture. That's homework. Then you take that prophecy and that scripture into your home. Are you getting it? And then continue where we left off in church. A child who does not do homework fails in class. Many are failing in life because they don't do spiritual homework. So there is a dimension in the scriptures where you can take a scripture and begin to prophesy in your own future. Hallelujah. So your life looks like the, the scriptures you have declared right now. If I look at your life, it's a result of the scriptures you have declared. Whatever you like from the scrolls, take it and prophesy it into your life. Like for example, Psalm 71, 21, one of my favorite scriptures. Hallelujah, powerful scripture. The Lord will increase your greatness. Where? On every side. Say on every side. And he will comfort you also on every side. The Lord will increase your greatness and comfort you on every side. So in other words, for example, in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Ghost, I take that word, that scripture, Psalm 71, verse 21. Father, may you increase my greatness on every side. I speak it over my life in the name of Jesus. Wherever my life is small, Father, increase the greatness according to your word in the name of Jesus. Do not increase it just concerning my finances. Also increase my influence. Also increase my anointing. Also increase my power. Also increase my relevance. Also increase capacity in my marriage. Also increase my children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when you study the scriptures, it is for purpose of taking them into your system and then you prophesy them. It's not just FYI. No. Amen. So the problem is many people read the Bible, but they don't declare the Bible. Declare it. If you don't declare it, we assume you are not interested. Can I get a big amen? All right. So we're talking about prophecy. Say, somebody say prophecy. Talk to me. Say prophecy. Who is a prophet? Who is a prophet? <laughs> a prophet is a human spiritual agent on a divine assignment. He is human, but he is spiritual and he has a divine assignment. I want to take my time. It's God's human agent. He's in human form. Alright? But he's on a divine assignment. A prophet is empowered by God. So God does not just send the man. He sends him with power. Remember it's a divine assignment. Somebody say divine assignment. So not only is it a divine assignment, it is also a divinely backed up assignment. So whenever you see a genuine prophet of God, remember he is backed up by heaven. He is backed up by heaven. Alright? Now, let's go back to Matthew 10 verse 41. He who receives, receives who? A prophet. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet, not in the name of a teacher. Not in the name of a man who does deliverance. We're talking about the prophetic side of the grace. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, your apostle, fortunately for you, functions in a lot of dynamics. But we are just zoning in on the prophet. What the prophet aspect does. So he who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet, not in the name of Chipoera, in the name of a prophet. Forget who Chipoera. Auna zono kubatsira. Not in the name of a brother. If you receive me as a brother, if I'm your biological brother, and you, you, don't, you don't receive the prophet in me, but you receive the brother in me, you get family advice. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet. Guess what? The prophet is carrying a reward. I'm not carrying my own rewards. I'm carrying your reward. But you know, I can carry your reward until Jesus comes. And you don't get it because you don't receive me. You can't receive a package from a man you have not received. Received means adjust your attitude, your stinking attitude. Adjust it. Yes, yes, yes. Your attitude matters. Your attitude towards the prophet matters. Your attitude towards, towards his wife matters. How you think about the prophet matters. How you speak about him in private matters. 
There are people who, you know, when we're in the presence of God like this, I just don't feel like blessing them. And then now, you see later on, you hear that they've been saying things behind the scenes. But when they come in your presence, they pretend to be good. But there's just something in you as a prophet that just, that just does not want to bless them. So, you see, how you behave outside church de determines how you receive when you come to church. Are you listening to this? It's not about pretending. Why, why fake what can be real? Your relationship with your man of God, your prophet, should be genuine. So that it can genuinely benefit you. Genuinely transform your life. Genuinely shift things in your life. I need a, and I need a living amen from somebody. Hallelujah. Amen is part of receiving the message. So he who receives the prophet in the name of the prophet receives the prophet's reward. He who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. How do you see me? Who do men say that I am? Ah, Jesus, they're trying to confuse us. Some they say uh, you are prophet Elijah. Some say you are this. Some say you are that. He says, okay, all of that doesn't matter. Who do you say that I am? Who do you, in your home, amongst your friends, who do you say I am? That man was always collecting offerings from us. Aha. Oh, so you see me as a manipulator, a robber. That's what you get. So you've got to change how you receive the man of God. How you perceive the man of God. So you can't be listening to nonsense from sunrise to sunset on a Friday or a Saturday and then come to church on Sunday and receive. Okay, do you know why people watch you worry about the man of God? Because you, because you entertain it. If you take a position that, guys, if you want our relationship to continue, please, that man and his wife, leave them alone. If you take that position, who will come? But they keep coming because you keep listening and you keep entertaining and you keep commenting. Why am I saying this? Not so that you respect me. No, I'm respectable worldwide. I'm not looking for respect from you. I'm looking for you receiving what I carry, which is for you, which you can't receive until you have, you have a level of honor. He says, he who honors me, I will honor him. So when you honor me, you're actually honoring the father who sent me. If the president sends someone here and says the president, and it brings a letter from the president and he says, right, uh, tomorrow I need to see one, two, three, four, five of you. Hello? It's a letter from who? From the president. A genuine letter from the president. If you say ha-ha to that person, do you know you have not said ha-ha to that person? It is the president who you have dishonored. And there's always consequences for dishonor. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter who you are. You can be as educated as I don't know who. Education does not fit to spiritual principles. And sometimes, you know, we allow our opinions to block us from receiving. Remember, he is a spiritual agent. Hello, he's a human agent who's spiritual, but is on a divine assignment. And the assignment could be rescue Tafazwa. But if Tafazwa does not come for the service, do you know, not coming for services is, is part of dishonor. Listen to what Jesus says. And I would, and, 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 and all Israel, I wanted to bless you. I'm paraphrasing. And I wanted to gather you as a chick gathers its hands, but you would not come for prayer shift. By now, I would have trampled on your enemy. Then he says, you will see me no more until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So until you receive that person and you say that person is, not only is he blessed, but is a blessing. You can see me physically. But in the spirit realm, I'm not participating. So, the issue of honor, let's deal with that first. If we fix that, other areas will be sorted. The issue of honor and dishonor in the body of Christ has hindered a lot of people from receiving. Hallelujah. Do you know, do you know that Jesus beat people in the temple? Jesus, you're Jesus. He beat people in the temple. Hello? Hello? But if you are not spiritual and you focus on him beating people in the temple, you call him a people beater. Hello? There is no one who does not have issues. Not including you, especially you. 
It's just, you know, when we're up here, everyone is looking at me. No one is looking at you. But if we take you and we put your life under a microscope, you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. You, 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 you'll be surprised. Do you know there's somebody who's in prison who did what you are doing? The only difference between you and them is mercy. So just because I sat was it doesn't mean that I want to work with Receive the prophet. Receive the prophet. Receive the prophet. Hallelujah. When I look at Archbishop Manjoro, I, I listen to me. I see an image of the Christ himself. I don't care how you feel about that. Hallelujah. I receive him as I receive Christ. It's in your Bible. So, and there's nothing you can tell me. Are you, I'm not interested whether it's true or it's not true. It's none of my business. My business is to connect to the Son of God in Him. The Son of God in Him. Not, not, not your information. Do you know how many people speak against Baba Guti? Huh? But He is the Father of faith in the land. Check their lives. Check their lives. People who walk in dishonor, very opinionated, they never make it. They never make it. I'm telling you the truth. And the deception is you can be making it today. <laughs> you think God was joking when he says in Psalm 105, verse 14 and 15, he says he permitted no one to do them harm. He rebuked kings, politicians, like Atsur, Rana Jehovah, for their sake, saying, touch not my anointed. Don't touch. Don't touch with your mouth. And do my prophets no harm. Why? They're on a divine assignment. So when you fight the prophet, you are fighting a godly assignment. Because that man is not just coming here on his own. If you don't like white, shame. I'm wearing white today. Ignore that. I'm not here for you to approve my colors. I'm here to help Shumi. I'm here to raise Nochi. I'm here to transform the life of Nicodemus. So that is the divine assignment. And God could have a multi-million dollar deal or transaction for Nicodemus that needs to be unlocked in the spirit so that Nicodemus can build a church. So when you now go to Nicodemus and you tell him I'm not a good person, you're not just fighting me. You're fighting the church that shall be built and the souls who will come to that church. And God says, ah, ah, were well, you not afraid to touch my vision? Paul was killing Christians as a hobby. He met Jesus. What did Jesus say? He says, ah, why are you kicking against the bricks? So fighting the church or fighting the prophet is kicking against the bricks. And you cannot harm the, you cannot harm the church without being harmed. So when you fight the man of God, speak against the man of God, what are you doing? You are kicking against the bricks. Because, listen to me, not because it's Chupoera, but because of the assignment the assignment. Usa Risa assignment. Usa Risa assignment because of your pride. Usa Risa assignment because of information you have. Don't fight the assignment. And remember, the assignment goes beyond you. There are more than, there are almost 40,000 people online who must receive. So if you fight the men of God, you are fighting the destinies of over 40,000 people. So, are you so special that God will spare you in exchange for 40,000 souls? So, 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 sometimes we don't see the full picture. So, <laughs> there's a pastor who went online and began to malign me about the way I teach about giving. Right now, his church is almost closing. It's quarter to closure. Why is it closing? The church is broke. Why is the church broke? He fought. Watch the prosperity prophet. If you fight a man who does healing, you'll be sick. If you fight a man whose speciality is prosperity, you'll be poor. So the devil always makes you fight a grace you need. That's how he operates. The people in Israel, they were sick. God's people. They were sick. And in Mark chapter number 6, from verse 4 to verse number 6, the Bible says, he says, but Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor. It's not that he's not an honorable person, except in his own country. 
Kuna wewe jira. Because wewe jira, I don't understand how to crash. So he sees Muna going to crash. He doesn't see the prophet. He says is not without honor except in his own country among his own relatives if you hear what my relatives say about me you think that they are describing lucifer but go and check what they are driving right now on the feet battered motor zoga zirum garage so many of my relatives are suffering because of me i know so again na kunganga into ko nobatwa uroi inini you are not understanding the equation. Don't go no no bachwa uroi unzi. No, uyu munu ya ruku konze resa uti zoi zushai. It's true, it's true. It's not a lie, it's true. But the reason is because of the anointing. Not because I'm a wizard, but because of the anointing. Because of the anointing. Don't go no bachwa uroi ne ngangare amazangu. Because of the anointing. Jesus was born. Mary was told. The mother, she was warned. In Luke 2.34, look, put, put it up there. We'll come back to Mark 6. And then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold! The word behold means special attention. Yeah. Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel. So don't just look at the rising caused by the anointed men of God. There's the falling. Question, which side are you? This is Jesus, Jesus Christ. So in the prophet of God, there's the power to raise. In the prophet, there's the power to fall. You choose your side. And many are falling because of big mouth. You don't like my big stomach? You've got a problem in the spirit. You better see a six pack here. Apostle Munu Angwari has dumbu chete kana dumbu. You see those kind of comments. Do them to your friends. Because remember, I'm he heavily, heavily defended. So the moment you start, heaven says danger. Heaven says forty thousand people. You see me, heaven sees 40,000 people. So heaven will destroy you for the sake of the 40,000. She was told, behold, this child is destined. So it's my destiny to destroy rebels. It's in your Bible. Watch this. And destined for the fall and the rising of men in Israel. For a what? For your what? You don't understand. Okay. People talk of miracles, signs, and wonders. Okay, you know miracles. A miracle is somebody who is sick being healed. Is that a miracle? Blind eyes opening. Is it a miracle? Okay. A wonder is something amazing. Like a marketplace breakthrough. That's a wonder. What is a sign? Okay. A sign which will be spoken against. So the sign has something to do with people speaking against. Moses, carry this rod with which you do signs, not miracles, signs. What are the signs? Plagues in Egypt. Those are the signs. So the sign aspect of an anointed person is what fights rebels. He has a miracle, signs, and what are signs? So Jesus Christ to akana assignment yema signs. Yekuti ba not tower against him ana Herod will be eaten up by worms. Those are signs. Those are signs. So keep talking, you will see the signs. It, God is just showing you a sign that don't 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 play. Don't play with this one. I know you've come from many churches where people used to send the pastor on assignment. Vote a pastor. Come and vote for me. Come and vote me out. You see me here next week. The whole week, Monday to Sunday. Despite your vote. Where is it in the Bible that they should sit down as a committee and vote for a pastor? Nonsense. That's why churches are splitting. 
in half mega churches because of voting pastors into power. So the pastor is now a politician because the church is set up like a political organization. That's why those churches are splitting because they are upside down. Listen to me. There's not democracy in the Bible. There's theocracy. Theocracy. Not democracy. Theocracy. What is theocracy? God puts a man there. Whether you like him or not is not your opinion. I've not three years, five years, seven years. That's why churches are upside down. Politics all over the church. And I talked to one man who, who goes to that church and I said to him, many people are going to hell and the pastors are responsible. So your church politics now allows you to destroy his saints because you are fighting for buildings. Who gave you those buildings? So there's a lot of nonsense going on in my in Zion. A lot of nonsense. Here, I don't tolerate church politics. I throw you out one time. Listen, there's no decision-making process to killing a snake. You just kill it. You don't need a decision. When I find a serpent in this place, I kill it. Out. Me, I'm not those pastors who pray about it. Pray about what? Do you start praying? There are things, daughter, I don't pray about them. I just throw people out. So there's a sign aspect of the man of God. The men of, listen, men of God are not ordinary. Men of God are signs to watch and too dangerous to mock. Very dangerous. Even if you're little children. Those little children, what happened to them? They were eaten by two she bears. So in other words, when a man of God is anointed, he also works with the animal kingdom. Men of God can speak. The earth can open up Munonyura and disappear. Don't play with the man of God. Don't toy with him. Don't allow your education at, 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 at uh, you know, the Harvard Business School deceive you. One woman who was a lawyer, she hissed. Do you know to hiss? She went to David or a devil. What did she get? She got a, 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 a stone. Size red, don't worry, no question already in the stomach. She went to doctors. They couldn't help her. She went and one prophetic man of God picked her and said, you hissed at a man of God. Go back to that man and he'll pray for you. He prayed for her. She was delivered. From what doctors could not deliver her from. Question, when Miriam and Aaron, when they spoke against Moses, what happened? Leprosy. Look at what the Bible says. And in the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 9, I think it is. From verse, what was that? 18 to 21. Go and read it. Moses says, I prayed for you because of your sin. He went into fasting and praying for 40 days. Because of Mamini Minako. That's why God gets angry. A man who fasts and prays, a man who hardly sleeps. For your sake. Then you run your mouth. God will sort you out. Paul said, Demas has done me much harm. May the Lord repay him according to his deed. So many people, your financial status is God paying you for your mouth. This thing is serious and I've seen it. Listen to me. Many people are injured in the body of Christ because of a prophetic dagger. You speak against a man of God, heaven reacts. What did God say, say about Moses? Hands I'll be an enemy to your enemies. Okay, KG. When you come to me for prayer, let me demystify something. The Lord opened my eyes. He says, He said to me this morning, He said, Why is it that when somebody like, like KG, for example, comes to me and says, Man of God, I'm having this problem, these spiritual problems, and I lay hands on you, right? When the demons manifest, have you heard what they say? They say, Hey, Urumba Sire. Huh? You, and the Lord explained it to me. I never understood it this way. He said, it is because you as my anointed, you are a touch not entity. You as my anointed, there's a grace over your life. There's protection over your life. So when KG is a real son and he brings his issue to you, what happens is that you take over his family battles. So now the God that backs you is the one who those witches are now fighting against because of you. Ah, you are not getting it. Because of you. So it's important for you to say submitted. Don't be rebellious to a man who's taking on your battles. The devil is a liar. 
The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Aaron and he are holding up Moses' hand. Wait. It's spiritual. It's it, 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 it prayer shift. Hello? What is happening? Takalo is signing a deal on the marketplace. The moment that my hands go down, the deal goes bingrish. So there's a connection between the man of God's hands being up and the man of God's being, hands being down and your losses on the marketplace. When the man of God's hands are up, it means you are winning. Do they not lift up the hands of a boxer when he wins? So as long as my hands are up, you are winning. Don't deceive yourself and think it's because of you. Hallelujah. Don't be deceived by shopping basket. Because my, when a shopping basket is $200, you can buy a spa. You can buy a right. You can buy a shopping basket when God wants to give you a supermarket. Kwana! Kwana! There are bigger things, hallelujah. There are greater heights. There are deeper depths to rise. God wants to raise you. You have a powerful destiny, but you are not submitted. The grace is so important. It's so powerful. A man of God must be perceived with the right lens. With the lens of the spirit. Let's be spiritual. They can't try. But when you talk of men of God, you talk anyhow. A man who can shift your destiny. A man who can speak a word. And destiny help us come and look for you. A man who can speak here in Zimbabwe. And investors from Dubai look for you. Listen to this. Until you create a gradient submission, the anointing cannot flow. The anointing does not flow on the same level. It flows where there's a gradient. Even if you are lighter skinned than mother, you are not more anointed. It's not about the yellow bone. Keep your yellow bone to yourself. Is it not your bone? We allow nonsense to deceive us. Our destinies are too big. Hallelujah. They are too great. Settle down in God's house. And behave yourself wisely. Know your limits. Don't be out of your jurisdiction. Know who you are talking to. Know who you are talking about. And know who's talking to you. So when you come to a church service and you are sleeping on a Sunday, the devil is a liar. You better sit at the edge of your seat and receive every word, every dot, every comma, every full stop, every utterance. Receive it. You can't even say amen under that mask. I'm not. Listen to me. I take my assignments very seriously. When I look at you, I don't see people. I see destinies. I see destinies. And connected to use other people's destinies. You better receive while I'm still around. Dubai is calling. South Africa is calling. Bulawa is calling. I can't say Tia forever. Hallelujah. So you need to receive while I'm still here. There was a testimony I posted on the group. A lady was working 22 years. No promotion. No nothing. One encounter, one. What did I say? Why did I, why did I say? I just said turn around. Okay, question. In the 22 years, do you think that she has never done this? Where was the promotion? The promotion was in my mouth. And when I said the level is changing, she believed. Listen. It's not about what you are told to do. It's about who tells you to do it. Okay. Moses, I'll give an example. Let me give an example. You may be seated. Eli uh, uh, Elisha, who was anointed, spoke to Naaman. Diesel, what did he tell Naaman to do? And to go and dip yourself in the Jordan River. Hello? How many times? Seven times. What did Neman, Neman say? And are there no other rivers? Because he knew the Jordan River. And there's another river over here. And he began to, to talk about other rivers. The man of God did not reply. If the man of God is telling you to do something so simple, why can't you just do it? And the Bible says he went and he jumped in. This way, 
according to the word of Elijah. According to the word. According to the word. But guess what he did first? He did what many of you do first. You want to cross check with the relatives. So he went and he dipped himself in that river. Hello? This way, the Bible does not record that there were other lepers there. Dipping there. So it was not about the river. If the river was special, he would have found other people already there. It would have been known as a river where lepers are cleansed. But it was not about the river. It was about the word given, the instruction given. So when I say give $50, have you never given someone $50? So it's not about giving $50. It's about the instruction. The power is in the instruction. The healing is in the instruction. The deliverance is in the instruction. So when I speak and I say bring a thousand US dollars here, it's not for my benefit. It's for your benefit. It's because it wants to unlock some things. Oh Lord, how I wish that they would listen to me because these things I say, God and I will have had discussions. We were in discussions about you this morning from 4.30 until 8.30 when I had to get Get ready to come. Then I bring you the minutes from heaven. Then you want to consult with your friends. And when you've heard from heaven, do not consult with flesh and blood. Who is flesh and blood? Who is, who is flesh and blood? Do you know what I saw from the scriptures? Do you know Miriam was affected by that leprosy? This way, she never really recovered. But read the scriptures. And she, and she na, 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 na Moses. And I fasted and prayed for Aaron. Miriam was a big mouth. Anyway, why was Aaron spared? Because Aaron had a destiny of a priestly office. So if Moses did not pray for Aaron, there would have been a gap of priestly office representation which would have affected dispensations to come. <laughs> Imagine if you are a person who was fighting Mary, who is carrying Jesus. So then Are you listening? That's why God, listen to me, God backs up and protects his packages. As you see me here, I'm a heavenly package. As you see me here, whether you like me or not, God did not consult you for your vote before you put me in power. He decided by judicial decision from the foundations of the earth before you were formed in your mother's womb. In other words, before Richard Arizra faith, before I'm Tumira WhatsApp, before I'm Rizra Murizo, before Ati, hey baby, God knew me. And it was a decision made, Gudara, before Richard, my father, knew faith, my mother. While they were still holding hands, even before they slept together, I was already a prophet. Now you think you are going to 2022 and say he's not a man of God. Who do you think you are? Wangaru kubi Jesu. Jesu na 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 mweam chene na baba. Pawaka garapasi wakati in the year 2022. This man is supposed to raise wasu. This man is supposed to do this. This one is supposed to speak in the destiny of Mona Lisa. Where were you? So people speak things that are too wonderful for them. Hakuna kuganira. Hakuna kuganira. Hakuna kuganira. This has been the source of your problems. To my kiki kiki kiki, Tom Little Bowers up, Mr. Ronald. Get out of that. As number 11, V11, get out of that. Hallelujah. V11 has never been a responsible for anyone's blessing. Church, I'm teaching you. I'm teaching you something. Especially this generation X. This new generation. They are suffering. They get in touch with me on, on, on my WhatsApp. Men of God. The, the, the most common thing is Antinamari. Okay, let me share with you a mystery. Do you know why poor people remain poor? Because they think Munesani Maragaba. Either Munesani Maragaba, Kadu Munesani Maragaba, Mshonga. So already they have not received a rich man in the name of a rich man. So they have no rich man's reward. So they remain poor. Don't despise someone who is getting something you need. It's a spiritual principle. Know your limits. Know your size. How can you end up over bounds? And the mishtaram ba meni mama muruto trainavana rebellion. Your children will perfect it. 
I've seen people die because of this grace of Azwa. I've seen it. Because if God sees, you will not stop. He will take you out of the way. Read your Bible. God killed people for the sake of the gospel. That boy in Acts 13. I that's so sad. No, no, not Simon the Sosara. Elimas. Elimas. Elimas Akans is Jinapo. Read it. Put it up. There's an Acts 13. And but Elimas the Sosara. For so his name was translated. Withstood them. He was withstanding the men of God. Seeking to turn the Pronsku away from the faith. So turning people away from the faith. When you turn people away from a man of God, you are turning them away from the faith. So I'm going to sin by his conviction. What happened? What did Paul say? He says you shall be blind for a season. And you are fighting God's agenda. You shall be blind for a season. Why do you think many of them are poor? Because they are blind to opportunities on the marketplace. Blind for a season. Men of God can make you blind. There's the blessing side. God said to Abraham, who was truly a prophet of God, I will bless those who bless you, Genesis 12, and I will curse those who curse you. Which side are you on? Be on the side of the blessing church every day here. Even this week, Monday to Friday, I'm prophesying. What am I doing today? I'm positioning you. That by the time we get to Tuesday and I'm prophesying, Monday I'm prophesying, Wednesday I'm prophesying. I'm not wasting time. I'm tired of wasting time prophesying to people who don't receive. I want to prophesy to people who are spiritually ready. They are alert. Hallelujah. Their spirits are clean and clear. And when the man of God speaks, the market has got to respond. Kings have got to obey. Why? What I say here in the church, it reflects on the marketplace. I want results for you. So I'm not teaching this so that you just respect me. It's your business if you don't. But I want you to receive that things that have not been working, they must begin to work. They must begin to work. They must begin to work. And some of you, you lie to the man of God. Don't lie to me. Don't lie to me. I can handle the truth. Thank you. Tell me the truth. Don't lie. Do you know, in the Bible, New Testament, people died for lying to the man of God. It's in your Bible. Ananias and Sapphira, they sold a piece of land. They lied about the amount. There was a covenant in the church that if you sell your land, you bring everything to the church. They did not do it. It's in Acts chapter number 5 in case you think I'm, I'm, I'm making things up. It's there in Acts 5. And the Bible says, his wife came in and the prophet of God asked, is this the correct amount? She says, yes. You're bringing wrong tithe. So you're lying on your envelope. I know, let's talk. When you bring your envelope, is it the correct tithe? Is it the correct amount? So you lie to the man of God. So I'm now holding an envelope, carrying a lie. Oh, so you're so special that these scriptures don't apply to you? Be genuine. Don't lie. Do you know right now, if I phone you on WhatsApp, you can be anywhere in the world. But you can lie. If you lie to spiritual authority, Gehazi, you have leprosy. The man of God says, anyway, was my spirit not with you? Sometimes I phone you and I say, are you okay? You say, no, I'm not okay. How did I know? Okay. You really believe I don't know how much you were paid? Are you that naive to think I don't know to about your marriage? Sometimes people bring envelope. I just say, God bless you. Listen. Playing games with God. Today I renovated my toilet. So God says to me, anoint this one. I anoint her. Go on the market. Get money. Hello? And he brings his tithe, but he's supposed to bring some more money from that so that we finish the toilet. So what about the Marema toilet? You should see how honest you are when you want the breakthrough. Men of God, Please, no problem. Because in my assignment, my, my focus is not my toilet. I just say, I don't know if it's so. Doctor, Ben, who are you? Uncircumcised Philistine, standing in the presence and blocking the renovations of the church. I command you to release that man in the name of Jesus. Ben releases the payment. 
tackle with holds. So heaven now is behind schedule. Because kune mungo muna achao ya kuchech who cannot handle those toilets that are out of order. Ano yaka wano ita say oenda whose blood is that person's where are the <laughs> the way people in the body of Christ play with spiritual things, I shiver. Doctors were kuchika inuit. Ah, munanda ragadai. I mean, you should see yourself when you first come to this church. Ah, you are humble. In the dictionary, we can actually take a picture of Pagan's humble. Twist a picture ago. But in Gobata, one or two more breakthrough. Well, Romeo, you should drive a Zephyr. Now, you drive a Benz. Saka, Benz, you are a Chaka, you are a driver, you are a prayer shift. You know, thank God for Mercedes. <laughs> you know, Apostle, I prophesied. You know, the last time I saw him, he prophesied. Goodness and Mercedes Benz. And I don't think Benz is going to Yeah. Right now, dinner appointment at 9.30. So, I'm going to go to church, you know, because 9.30 dinner appointment. You know, church starts at 7. The front of the car wash. Because you get a Benz. You get a Jehovah. So, you get a Benz. You get a Benz. You get a God is looking and says, hey, this is a population. This. May rebellion be mine as you. I want to find some camp back out in Gagarimu gated community. One house in Borodo Brook. What is Brook? God wants you to have your own Brook. You go for a name by in Borodo Brook. Shit, I was here so I got to get on my way. Those are questions of details. Eh, why it was even Jehovah's or who fungi raga? Why behave? I will wait a moon. Wait. That way, yes, Ziva. If you really knew what God has in store for you, the danger with missing a church service is the service where I prophesy your things are not here. Sometimes you hear me say, Where is this person? They're not here. Okay, I move on. I don't say, Ah, oh, uh, we move on. As an anointed man of God, I'm also anointed to move on beyond you. How long will you lament over Saul? Arise, go to Jesse's house. I have found a replacement. His name is David. Anoint him. So the gospel will not stop if you die. If the gospel did not stop when Jesus died, who are you? Because sometimes we think that if, you know, if I'm not there, don't deceive yourself. Sometimes, you know, pride, you know, to Kanganisam church. I mean, God help the church. I'll shut him up and into a harrow or any ring. What are you there? Yeah. You know, God is really awesome. Praise be to God. To Him alone be all the glory. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? What made you wake up today? Because when you are going to get out of here, what guarantee did you have that you wake up? Denga, 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 denga. Usa shine, denga, denga. Usa shine, denga. Ripele, denga, 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 denga. When I now Zia, I'm going to 16 years old. I came to a mambo. I came to David. Uzia, read your Bible. He was 16 years old. As long as he sought the Lord in the days of Zachariah, as long as he brought his first fruits, as long as he brought his offerings, as long as he listened to that prophetic voice, God caused him to prosper. This one. 
Verse 15, he was marvelously helped until he became very strong. Verse 16, but, but when he was strong, his heart was lifted. When he had one or two more orders, his heart was lifted. When he got one or two tenders, his heart was lifted. Consequence, to his destruction. Not to the destruction of Zechariah, to the destruction of the boy. After that boy died, Zechariah anointed someone else. After you go, I will anoint someone else. Because to his destruction, for he transgressed against the Lord his God. By entering the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar, he went out of his jurisdiction. Next verse. So Azariah, the priest, went in after him with and with him were 80 priests of the Lord. Valiant men. Next verse. What happened? And they withstood Uziah. When you see men of God withstanding you, they withstood Uziah and said to him, it is not for you, Uziah, to burn incense to the Lord, but for the priests. Don't let your cash fool you. The sons of Aaron, you see why Aaron was spared? Huh? Who were consecrated to burn incense. Get out of the sanctuary, for you have, you have trespassed. You shall have no honor from the Lord. That means can be cut off in a moment. Next verse. Then Uzziah became furious. Uzziah. Mother and boy are still in the sanctuary. Ah. You know, you know in the name of projects and look it in. Sandu nendr Asha pepe shpes kape. I actually have other things to do. Madan, madan boa man. Kochi. Ah, vandi jembe oka peke ikai. Hmm. Zongo ta ulani. I mean, okay, Jeremy, what's wrong with this? Yeah, get this. What? What? No style, okay, go masuan. This is what is trending right now. Oga, calm down. Slow down. Uzia. You are over. Step in. And it may be mad that the way she packaged it, when she said it to you, was not palatable to you. But guess what? We don't go to the school of learning how to talk to Takalo. So I talk to you anyhow. I know that just as that's how I do it. Muraf and that's how you see a rough to wisdom. Pangwe mother wa ona spirit kuti munhu adakukurora iwe ada zvinhu zvakaita sei zvakatsika Neuti ka not every man who sees you wants to marry you someone to use you So the higher your dress the more they want to use you Moza varume no nyaso chika ku approach munhu anenge ane zvinhu zvakatsika You are not a man so you don't know Romeo is laughing because he knows I'm telling the truth But wa unoona kuti ato already half the job is done she's already half naked <laughs> Because what you are willing to show, you are willing to share. Without young is a prayer shift, yes. We bless God for blessing you with a powerful. Donny Parton bust, but can you just keep it closed? So, Joe, watch this. However, they receive it, it's not my business. It's your business. Without you know, maybe God, I don't tell you, Ralph, could you not realize that we're in a pride, 
Saka kana ndatara ne Rafka pride ke kana sumuka kumwaro but eh eh ndo kana chikuda kukuratidzaka. Nekuti kwando da kuendesa kuti hasha. Uzia became furious. When you get angry at the anointed, danger, 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 danger. Uno vara business, uno vara. Did you know it takes one transaction for a business? You begin to be a loiter. Uno za loiter. Uko na boys no za ama shoemaker, i boys no fambane tzoka. One day I'll tell you about Ajala. <laughs> a Nigerian singer sang about a man who was a star. His name was Ajala. Ajala traveled all over the world. But Ajala died a pauper. Every time I went to Changa Chaira, I had a passport. You went to a passport, you can request for the big passport. You didn't know that. You can actually go and request for that. But no, don't give me a normal passport. Can you give me a big book passport? Ajala a big book passport. But <laughs> Don't let your traveling to far countries deceive you. By a prophet, Israel was brought out. By the same prophet, Israel was preserved. Listen, the prophet comes. Watch this. The prophet comes with provision. And the prophet also comes with protection. He will release provision. But I'm going to find up because you need protection. You need protection. In fact, the more... Do you know, I love what one of my sons said. He says, he says, he says that the things that have happened, in fact, just Friday alone, when you prophesied some things directly to me, he says, those things, they happened. Meet, as within two hours after prayer shift, morning prayer, the, the things, they happened. Watch this. this. He said something that humbled me. He says, I need you more now than when I had no money. I said, you are getting it. And that's the deception. Because people think that when you have the money, you no longer need the cover. It's the mistake of the prodigal son. He said, give me my money. The father gave him the money. But he lost everything. Because he got the money and lost the cover. Never lose the cover. Never lose the cover. Never lose the cover. When the man of God showed up in the book of First Kings chapter number 17, the widow was suffering. They were almost dying because of hunger. The man of God activated provision. And the Bible says he gave her instructions. And the Bible says that she went and did according to the word of Elijah. Don't edit my instructions. And what happened? And she and he Eight for many days. In my instructions is provision for many days. Provision for many days. Provision for many days. I don't have to prophesy to you every day. One prophecy, you can eat for many days. Oh, I wish you'd get that. I said you can eat for many days. Hallelujah. By this prophetic action, may you eat for many days. And then the Bible says it came to pass that the child of this woman died. This woman, the widow, the child died. What happened? The man of God, what did he do? The Bible says she took the child and put him on his bed. And the man of God, the Bible says he went and he lay prostrate in front of, on, on top of the child. And he said, Lord, may this child live again. Watch this. And the Bible says that God heard the word of the man of God. It means that the woman had prayed before and she had failed. So she needed a higher grace because she was out of a due restriction. So because of the relationship of the man of God and God, this man said, Lord, I stayed in this widow's house. She fed me for many days. Do not allow the devil to triumph. Cause this child to come back to life. And the Bible says the child came back to life and he gave the breakthrough back to the mother. So watch this. Because she kept relationship with the man of God. 
the Shunammite woman, same thing, the man of God, he was there, he helped her with a number of things. She was barren, she got the child at the prophetic word of the man of God, but she did not stop the relationship with the man of God. There is a satanic deception to keep you from maintaining relationship with the man of God when you start to get the breakthrough. Are you here? That is a satanic arrangement so that you stop listening to the men of God because you got a breakthrough. So the Bible says that it came to pass after this miracle child of the Shunammite woman, the child died. Your breakthrough can die. Your business can die, but you better remain connected. You better remain connected. So the Bible says that they went to meet the man of God. Hallelujah. And they said, is all well with you? She said, all is well. Hallelujah. But the child had died. And the Bible says that the man of God, he raised the child from the dead. Listen, do not allow breakthroughs to deceive you. Man relationship. Maintain relationship. Maintain relationship. To me, should be in 2 Kings now, chapter 4. Maintain relationship. Maintain relationship. I'm talking about the Shunammite now. Maintain relationship. Maintain relationship. Watch this. The Lord said to me, maintain relationship if you are poor. Widow of Zarephath. Maintain relationship if you are wealthy. Shunammite woman. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? So it doesn't matter what level you're on. Maintain relationship. Maintain relationship. Mwanazarwa, as mwanano gona uwar. Maintain relationship. Mwanarwa, as mwanano gona kufa. Maintain relationship. Maintain relationship. May you never allow a new level to cause you to be so proud you think you no longer need the anointing. Atidi wa nanishansa munu wa mwaru nge brumu. Kana wape zene brumu nenda se? Next time you say, Nay, Brum Rugup cannot score for Jurgup. Where's Chukorobo? I mean, Puera. There's a mess here that I need him to clean up. Come and clean up this mess. That's how a lot of people treat the men of God. Okay. Chukorobo, no Chukosh is there. I'm Chukorobo Jago. I'm there to teach you the ways of the LLE on. When there are things you can't handle, I'm there to help you to handle them and to teach you how to handle them in the future. That's my job. My name is Chipoyera, not Chikorob. You should hear when you're in trouble. Hi, Dad. Lucifer started again. But when you get a payment, we don't see the, we, we don't, we don't see the tithe. We only hear from you when there's a fire. So when I see your phone ringing, I know fire on the mountain. I want to see your phone ringing when there's also breakthroughs, when there's testimonies. I also want to see you. And I want to share those breakthroughs with you. It's in your Bible. Galatians 6 verse 6. Share all good things. Especially US dollars. With him who teaches you the word. Let him who is taught you share US dollars with him who teaches me. Yeah. The Bible says, Bella, I never connected these two scriptures. I used to read one, and then I'll read another one. First uh, Timothy 5, verse 17. And let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor. Say double honor. So when you want to benefit from the prophet, double honor that man. Say double honor. When it comes to your natural mother and father, he says, honor, one honor, your mother and your father. When it came to the man of God, he says, double honor. That means you are supposed to honor me double what you do to your father. Okay, you don't believe it. So let me show you a scripture. I'll come back to my scripture of double honor. Genesis 49 verse 26. He says, the blessing of your spiritual father has superseded the blessing of your ancestors. So I can do more for you than your natural father. Yeah, Rabbi. And those blessings, they have rested on your head. So the blessings come on your head. <laughs> the ones from your natural father can come in your hand. But the ones from your spiritual father come on your head. They come on your head. They come on your head. There it is. Do not value what's in your hand more than what I can put on your head. Back to 1 Timothy 5. Are you learning, Rich? This is how you'll be disseminating scriptures in South Africa. 
And let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of what? Double honor. Especially those who labor in the word and in doctrine. Show me a pastor in town who labors more than me in the word and in Show me. So because of me doing that, I am worthy of honor according to your Bible. He explains the honor. Verse 18. Yeah, watch this, Isabel. And the, for the scripture says, you shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain and the laborer is worthy of his wages. What is he saying? The man of God labors in the word of God. He's worthy of double honor. So he's laboring. He's like an ox digging. Prayer shift. Prophetic shift. Supernatural shift. Whatever shift he's doing, he's laboring. After he labors, you owe him a salary. That's the Bible. All right. Can I now Mombe can I shirima? Hello. Do you know what they do? Do you focus? I know if I'm wrong. So the man of God now wants to eat. You say, no, shut up. Just work. We need to pay church bills. Well, you have started. Chandra. That's what the church is doing. Yeah. A man of God is worthy of double honor. The laborer, the man of God, is worthy of his wage. As a business, this is what we used to do, Jesus. As a business, the, the pastor must be on your payroll. Oh, you see, you're quiet. Yeah. The pastor must be on your payroll. I'm telling you how to be blessed. I don't need the salary, but you need me to be on your payroll so that you keep being a boss and keep having a payroll. This is how you get blessed. We used to do this. When we were running Robin Motors, our pastor, Pastor Doug Chiesa, was on a salary. Whether he was in the country or out of the country, he was still on a salary. Whether we saw him or we did not see him, he was still on a salary. So the grace kept the business alive. These are powerful things. You have paid your maid, but have you paid your apostle? I see you rising KPM because of divine alignment I see you rising and if you are submitted it means that spiritually I take over your battles that's what it means hallelujah that's why after they partnered with Paul Paul said something profound one of the most profound statements you'll ever hear he says and my God not general God my God the God of Apostle Paul, the God of miracles, the God of signs, the God of wonders, my God, the God who does great things, my God, Mwariwangu, shall supply your needs. You can't say, you cannot say, my God shall supply all my needs. That's not even scriptural. It's the man of God who prays that prayer over your life after you partner with the grace. Then he says, ah, my God shall supply all your needs. Is it not the God of Elijah who stepped in onto the scene after he got to the house of that woman? That woman was struggling. She says, we're about to eat our last meal and die. But when he stepped there, he didn't get there by himself because she made him also eat. He said, make a cake for me first. Then his God supplied all her needs. There is a dimension of God according to my relationship with God. So when I pray for you as a partner, I'm asking that God, not general God, that God, that God to supply your needs. Because your mind is being adjusted. Because you are being positioned to receive. Don't go away from here saying Apostle is angry. No! I'm not angry. I'm teaching you the word. And my passion is because I see so many of these mistakes. I've seen them all over the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see a young girl here. She drives in S class. But she's here for every morning prayer. drive coffee on four tires. You can't even make it for prayer. Young girl driving S class. But you see her every morning she's here before me. You see, answer the deceitfulness of riches. It's in First Timothy chapter number 6. Don't let riches fool you. 
Marino Furirai, Uka Sangwarira, Uka Sangwarira. And the last, when you have built goodly houses, I mean, Deuteronomy 8, when you have built goodly houses, be careful not to forget the Lord your God, because it is He that gave you the power to get the wealth. Hallelujah. May I never forget the God who blessed me with the wealth. May the wealth never make me forget. May your job at an NGO earning US dollars make never make you forget. And the Kuniwa was stricken out of expecting an RTGS. Ah, Nakanapekutangira. Ah, church, I don't want you to struggle. That's why I'm talking with, like this with passion. Because I don't want you to struggle. Your struggling is unnecessary. Just do the right thing. Hallelujah. That's what God said to Cain. He says, if you do well, will you not be received? So if you do the correct thing, the blessing is waiting. I want that dimension of blessing for you. I said, I want that dimension of blessing for you. May you never touch the anointed of God. Today, I speak over your life. Numbers 23, verse 18 to 21. I speak that scripture over your life. I declare and I decree some of my honor. La, la, makata, mahaya. Tarusan, come here. Some of my honor. So when I'm doing this, I'm not giving you clothes. You've got clothes. But what I'm giving you, son, is honor. I'm giving you, stand right here. I'm giving you graces that I carry. The Bible says aprons. Aprons from the body of Paul came and they healed the sick. You understand? So with these clothes, you become a miracle worker. With these clothes, you become a sign and a wonder. With these clothes, you become a carrier of power. Hallelujah, somebody. I see things shifting. Those who are genuinely submitted. Those who, who obey instructions that they don't edit with their relatives. Abraham was given instruction by God. Bring Isaac, put him on the altar. He didn't allow Sarah to edit it. Don't allow your spouse to edit your instruction. I wish somebody was here. I said don't allow your spouse to edit your instruction. There's prosperity in those instructions. There's defense in those instructions. There's marital stability in those instructions. There's elevation in those instructions. I see you rising. I see God defending you. May the God that I serve, may he defend this flock. My little children of whom I travail again, again, again until Christ be fully formed in you. I see another dimension of Christ's mercy being fully formed in you. There is a grace that is coming upon you. My little children.